Ladies and gentlemen and members of the British Royal Navy, hello, <laughs> and welcome to the Quaternion Developers Commentary. I'm here with uh, two of my testers, and hi guy, you also did a lot of the code too, didn't you? I mean, some of I it. I did extender code, some yeah, of it. That. A lot of that was dirking, but yeah, I helped. Yeah, and, and, uh, and Rosie, say hi. Uh, hi. Hello. All right. <laughs> and uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is delete my save so that we can start from the beginning. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. No spoilers. Okay. So uh, this is uh, this is the beginning of the game. Um, I, uh, I I kind of like the effect that I did in this room where you have the uh, tiles really that neat. light up. Are those um, individual shapes? Yep, each one of those is its own DTS. Fun fact. Yeesh. <laughs> oh, that's nothing. Wait until we get to Tower of Winds. Um, so, so I'm counting on you not being able to go over, like not realizing that this is over here and just rolling forward first. And then you'll hit this trigger that tells you how to turn the camera. Um, oh, okay. For my controls being weird, uh, you also can't jump in this area. Um... And uh, so over here, we're going to take a, uh, this box, and this box can be pushed. Take that, Jeff. Um, um, are you going to... Uh... Oh. And now we see the name of this level is back at power control. Yeah, See, that, are you gonna punch the box? That box is a pain in the butt, by the way. It seems like half the time players get stuck underneath it. It's a pain in the box. Yeah. Um, also, this you have to kind of. It makes you want to do martial it. arts against it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, actually, I think that's something that would have been cool is for the very beginning before you push the box. Um, since each tile is a shape, the like the closer you are to the box and the exit to that room, the brighter the tiles could have been. Uh, that that might have been interesting, interesting, but the way that I'm doing the tiles, uh, each brightness level is its own texture, so... Oh god. You can't exactly <laughs> vary that continuously. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so, so the goal of this level is to turn on all the lights. Now there was an earlier version of this level, I guess you'd call it, where you turned on the lights by just hitting switches. And yeah, I decided that that level was boring, so. Way more fun to have to find a thing to roll around. Oh, here's the first ion cell in the game. Those are entirely optional, and I don't actually know if we can get this one right now. I don't think we can. Clutch edge hit. Actually, I think if you I think if you roll fast enough off of the checkpoint, you can oh, get it. We might be able to get it. Oh, let's see if I can get it. Hold on. Two hours later. Oh no! Oh, we actually got easy. it. Yeah. Wow. 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 That actually surprises me that it's that easy. Um, I want to. I want to point it. Yeah. Go ahead. You'll notice that there are a lot of sound effects in this, like the checkpoint and the ion cell, that actually change their pitches to match the key of the music. Um, so, That's cool. Yeah, they, uh, they they started doing that in PQ, and I was like, oh, I could do that in Quaternion as well. It's a great idea. It's actually a little bit different because in PQ there are actually multiple copies of each sound to try to get the best one. Uh, whereas in this it's just one sound file and it pitch shifts it. Yeah, we used to pitch shift, but that didn't work very well. This is the first place in the game you can die, so let's just die to demonstrate that. I do I do want to point out, um, since I was speedrunning this on a computer that didn't work with shaders, um, it was really, it was stupidly hard to, um, to differentiate the uh, the actual platform and the sky, so I had to like I had to um, move like <laughs> inches away from my computer so I could tell where I was going. Huh. <laughs> it was I'm not fun. There's that much of a brightness difference. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'm there is. not going to get this checkpoint, and you'll see why in a moment. Wow, oh, speedrun strats. Speedrun yeah. strats. And yet, you're probably already past your time. Yeah, speaking of treadmills, I mean, I haven't spoken about the treadmills. You see how the needle just jumped forward like that? Oh, yeah. Uh, the reason it does that is so that you can't, like, cheese it by getting the light to be turned on, like, during one of the parts where it flickers. 
it'll jump ahead to the next point where it would have turned off. Because whether the light is Clever. on or off is just a function of where the needle is. Really, next level speedrun strats right here, guys. Oh yeah, you can just respawn at the checkpoint if you want. Uh, by the way, something interesting about checkpoints is they don't really have an orientation, so like, if I die right now, I respawn facing forward, right? But if I roll off this side, and now I die, now I respawn facing this way. It's based on yeah. whichever direction your camera was facing the last time you touched the checkpoint. That screwed me a lot in some of the later levels. Yeah, mostly, <laughs> mostly because I was too lazy to actually give checkpoints orientations. Um, so down here, we can uh, we can turn this all the way up, but now we're sort of stuck down here because we just came down... Wow, I... that was... Yeah, but what about speedrunning strats? But yeah, we could just respawn, <laughs> which is interesting. Uh, a lot of players, I feel, are going to go over here. <clears throat> and look, it's a dead end. But but that at least clues you into the fact that you might be going across there at some point, if you look up. Um, interesting thing about this, uh, this, this jump power-up, by the way. Um, I'll show you in a moment. It is single use. So, uh, the one over here you don't actually need to use. You can just sort of roll across this gap here. You can cut corners. Yep. And there you go. Wow. You could totally steal that jump and use the other... use it on the other section if it wasn't slower. Yeah. Uh, by the way, so, so the interesting thing... So we're over here, right? Let's say we fall out of bounds. Oh, you do yeah. keep your jump. Yeah, the temporary jump is the one thing in the game that you actually... Like, the one power-up thing that you actually keep when you respawn. It's kind of weird. That's some attention to detail. Alright. So now that we've got all of the sections turned on, we're going to get a cutscene here. Now, the way these cutscenes work is kind of interesting. Uh, basically... It freezes, like, your marble movement and stuff, and then, um, then what it actually does is it takes the, um, it takes the camera and just overrides the function that decides where the camera is so that you can put it elsewhere. Now we're gonna turn this thing around. I actually think there's a glitch here. Hold on. Slight graphical issue. Yeah, you can jump with a gray marble. Huh. That's kind of funny. You can't <laughs> jump with the red marble. Right. Yeah, this flickering is just to sort of show you that- oh, by the way, that door's rising. That you're sort of powering up the marble. So now we can jump whenever we want. Now, got so now you've made on. marble blast powered up. Yeah, uh, notice we also got our quantum bar in the lower left. That's, uh, that's kind of nice. You get spritzed. <laughs> yeah, um, <clears throat> interesting thing about that, the implementation of that, by the way, while you have the gray marble, you can't get any quanta. Like, it just won't give it to you. This never comes up in the game, because how are you going to get to, you know, the levels of quanta in them, but... It's like built-in anti-cheat. <laughs> hey, I think you can jump around the wall uh, you, onto the platform. You can, in fact, jump around this wall, but then you don't get to hear the cool music, so I'm going to switch. Can you jump up, jump up and get down around jump the wall? We get down. Jump around. Alright, now for the fun part. Yep. So, uh, this level revolves around finding codes to open these doors, and the first one is actually back up here. The other nice thing about this level, so this level actually, of the levels that are currently in the game, this is the oldest. Like, this level was around back when Quaternion was planned to have, like, 15 levels. Feature Friday. I, I remember watching you derp around on this for like half an hour. Oh yeah, on the, on the on the platforming part at the yeah. top. <laughs> yeah, so uh, 
uh, those of you watching may have seen this level like 20 times, and so I apologize. Now this is actually a relatively new feature here, the fact that there's a line from the switch to the thing it affects in this level. Uh, I added that because uh, earlier people just had like no idea what the switches were doing in testing. I think that was Matan actually, who was like, it took Sounds me like so Matan. long to figure out what the <laughs> switches did. So that's, so uh, there's, here's this code. Square and yellow and ten. By the way, there's a bit of an easter egg here with how the codes are arranged. Uh, I don't know if either of you knows it. Um, you told me at one point. Yeah. And I've since forgotten. Okay, this sign, by the way, this, like, do not enter sign, you can just jump around it, like, right there. But the reason it's there is because so many people thought that they had to go up to the top to get one of the codes. Oof. And it's a pain in the butt to get all the way up there, so I wanted to make it abundantly clear at this point in the game that that section is optional. And now we almost have the opposite problem. People don't realize that they can go around it and think that they're supposed to get rid of the sign at some point. Or which, people um, think that it's a bug that you can go around it. I've heard that one. I, yeah. Is a, uh, is a better problem to have. Yeah. Um, yes. Excuse me one quick second. I'm going to... You're going to... There we go. I just muted something. Um, one, one of my Chrome tabs was playing audio. So anyway, uh, so now I'm going to come down here, and uh, there's another code over here. This this one took me the longest to find. Yeah, it's a little bit tricky to find, but like, you can sort of reason, like, why else would this platform be a thing? <laughs> Ion cell. Well, yeah, but there's no Ion cell on it. It's just a dead end. Secret collectibles. <laughs> you get to that. There's a button there that will kill the do not enter sign. Alright, so now we can open that one down there, but first we're gonna open this one over here. Alright. Good old fade out when you face the wall, or you're inside the wall bug. I used to, when I, when I first tested Katerniana, I used to think there's actually something down um, underneath this part. Hmm. <laughs> and I kept looking around and around and I was like, where is it? Yeah, there has these, to be something here. These jumps have been made easier. They used to be like one tile wide stairs. And then it was like, okay, no, this is the second level of the game. Let's not get that hard yet. And there's the last code, by the way. I don't know if you missed it, but... Now... I mean, technically the second to last fun, code. I'm going to demonstrate the uh, the speedrun route for this, where basically you memorize what all of the codes are and how many times you need to press each button, and then you can do it like this. Watch. That quickly. Next level. <laughs> I really like this effect, by the way, of the chain shattering. That is cool. Fun fact. I remember back in testing when there wasn't a cutscene, and it just shattered as soon as you pressed one of the buttons to get it right. It freaked the shit out of me. <laughs> <laughs> Fun fact, by the way, uh, I think this DTS is actually the biggest one in the game. Because this is all one DTS right here. Oof. A reuse of. Blender physics? Yep. Also, uh, another fun fact, if you uh, sort of move the camera here, you can see the change is oh. here. Uh, nice. Yeah, that's actually a torque bug. Resting uh, Yeah, what happens is it culls, like, it, it culls the DTS based on the bounding box in its first frame. So, because these links aren't in the first frame, like, aren't here in the first frame, <clears throat> it thinks that the whole DTS is out of the view of the camera. Uh, you can actually see this in Marble Blast Gold in um, Scaffold. If you uh, respawn right after hitting one of the trapdoors behind the start, and then you jump up and down, you get a weird effect. This is an Ion Pack. 
Uh, the goal of the game basically is to collect these to power up the giant facility that this game takes place in. So, I'm gonna grab this one. Is it a power-up facility? And now we're in the Nexus. Uh, by Best the way, level if you want, you can use this to go back to the previous levels. In case you want to play them again, though there will be another way to play them later. Alright, now I want everybody to be quiet because this cinematic effect is actually really cool. Nexus. So yeah, this is the Nexus. Uh, you'll Shout out to Animation Looping. Best music ever. Yeah. Very. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, these are here. Uh, they weren't here earlier in development. They're here basically so, to uh, to clue you in as to the fact that you should be following these wires. And also these gray inactive wires are the ones that you shouldn't be following yet. <laughs> nice. Affordances. <clears throat> yeah. Um... There's a start pad here, by the way. Uh, this one is for later in the game when you return to the Nexus from a level. It's the new default. And I actually noticed something really weird happening with the uh, with DTS uh, display. Yeah, why does that happen? Does the center pillar get cold? Well, it gets cold uh, because it's too far away. The problem is the door behind it is even farther away, and the door is displaying. Hmm. I think it's because the door is set to ignore draw distance. A lot of things in this game are set to ignore draw distance. Um, doors in particular, usually because they, um, A, they aren't too many polygons anyway, and B, you don't want the player to be able to see through a door to the other side. I mean, I guess you can kind of peek underneath this one. That's kind of funny. So, uh, which of these levels do you want to do first? Because we actually have options here. Let's do, um, <coughs> Orthoplex Temple first. Because right. that's technically the next on the list. Yeah, there's, there's sort of an intended order in terms of, like, the way I imagine people doing the levels. Uh, but it's not enforced. Like, there are, uh, there are other orders you can do levels in if you want. Got a little bit of a platforming section here before we go in. This one is the most basic. Just jump over some gaps. Alright. This effect. I love this effect. Oh, 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 oh is that the language on? Cool. Yeah, it's like this. Portal thing. Uh, fun fact, I just saw green. Earlier in, earlier in development with shaders off, this would just look like an ugly green square. Because the way it works is actually a sort of chroma key. Uh, if if it's a specific color on the screen, it'll replace it with the portal effect. Uh, and it determines which one to do based on where you are in the nexus. Um, actually, fun fact, I can show you what it looks like with shaders disabled. Yeah, you can see right now it looks green because it hasn't, like, realized that we turned shaders off yet because it only does that on the next frame. And then when we resume it, it swaps it out with a texture that at least looks okay. I'm going to turn shaders back on because shaders look awesome. And we're going to go into Orthoplex Temple. That's the first time I've seen that whole thing without shaders on. Or with shaders on, sorry. Yep. And we get this nice sort of fade effect as the level loads in. Um, there is music in the background right now. It's very quiet, just sort of a humming noise. And the way I actually made that music was just by taking a section of the music and, like, looping it and reverbing it and low-passing it, essentially, to get sort of a homogeneous blended version of the beginning of the music. It's, uh, it's an interesting effect that I did. And it's very subtle, too. Like, you can barely hear it right now. Well, this pillar is good for showing off the reflection effects. These are the <laughs> high graphics reflection effects. Extreme plus five for the win! 
they don't actually go to Extreme Plus 5 anymore. This is a, uh, a patched version, which has actually Aww. been released. Oh, whoops. Don't want to change the what's, full screen. What's the to, top? It goes to Extreme, Ultra Extreme, Super Ultra Super. Extreme, and XX Murder Your GPU XX. <laughs> And as you can see, it is uh, doing a pretty good job at murdering my GTX 1060. The, the your should have been Y-O-U apostrophe R-E. Just to make fun of... Um... Modern knowledge. I'm gonna leave it at very high for now. And here's our first Quantum. Uh, this is Quantum Blast. Now, you might be familiar with this level, actually, if you've played the demo. Because <clears throat> this this level is the level that you play in the Quaternion demo, and gameplay-wise, I think it's pretty much unmodified. Uh, actually, that's not true. I did adjust the programming of the final area to make it easier. Um, yes, this quantum has a time limit of uh, 50, uh, or not 50, 50, that'd be OP, 15 seconds. Oh, really? I didn't know that. We're gonna see a cutscene now, just to show us sort of an overview of the level. <laughs> you can see, uh, you can see things loading in in the background. All right, and now in this level you're ringing bells. That rings also, a bell. you wanna you wanna see me get an ion cell? I would love to see. Oh, I think I know where where uh, this one is. You can go up here. Yeah. And it's uh, over on the edge, right here. Spoilers. Oh, I fell. Yeah, there's a slight glitch in this level where when you fall out of bounds, the music restarts because it thinks you're back in the initial room, so it turns the music to the, you know... To the humming noise. Yeah. Um, so over here... Got another couple of bells to ring. Oh. Wow, I'm doing nice. very well tonight. Yeah. And yeah, how much you had to drink before this? <laughs> Wait, how much did you have to drink? At least two cups of chocolate milk. Oh, I think I just demonstrated there that the uh, the bells do not actually have collision. Actually, one of them does, which is a little bit strange, but you'll see which one that is later. Pro strats. So does your blast uh, set the upward velocity or by impulse? Um, it's complicated. Um, what I used to have it do is I used to have it like apply the appropriate impulse to get you up to a certain height above where you started, and then I realized that you could totally cheese that and, like, jump down from a height, blast just before you hit the ground, and you'd be back up on the ceiling. It was <laughs> really funny. I think I have a video of that somewhere. So, uh, now we go into here, and it's unclear what to do. This is the bell that has collision, by the way, the one that's broken. Oh, well that makes sense. That's a yeah. bell last for me. I spent a good 20 seconds thinking of that one. <laughs> I just got a notification sound. Oh, Facebook is still open here. Wow. Okay. Um, yeah, so, um... So, it's not really clear to a lot of people what they're supposed to do here. So, um, so I put this on the wall. This says, hey, go around, and there's something that shoots something. And, uh, indeed this is true. If you, uh, if you go around the back, uh, you will notice there's a bell here that turns on this gun device. Laser. It's gun device. Wow, that is... Flashing different colors. Cool. I'm not actually sure why it's doing that. I Neat. Mean, I want to call it a feature. It's not a bug. It's feature. 
I want to point out that doing this part of, or at least, um, doing this part of Orthoplex Temple, um, like, in my way of speedrunning the level is, it's so stupid. I mean, you can activate it from inside. Yeah, because the, um, the blast radius is pretty high, or at least compared to what I've seen before. Yeah, it is. Okay, so... Uh, now you see we've got this big laser beam that's getting deflected into the wall. Fun fact, this, the way this is programmed is really crazy. Basically, um, there's a giant grid that has, among other things, like, there's, a, there's actually a marker in the middle of every wall that tells it, hey, there's a wall here, so the beam can't go through it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Also, the beam is deadly if you touch it. That might have... So you could just hard code. That ruined a lot of uh, runs. You got beamed by it? Yeah, I did. Note that you're, you're gonna note that this beam moves with like a ton of lag. Uh, that's intentional. Uh, because Rosie was complaining that when the beam moved at a higher FPS, it like lagged her game. So, I made it only update, like, once every half second, and then that activates the central thing so that this platform now moves up and down. You have to be careful I, about your moment Oh, I there. just... I just realized you are mentioning a couple days ago about getting the zeroth cycle on the platform. Mm -hmm. If you're in a cutscene and the platform starts moving, wouldn't it just leave you behind? You're correct, it would. Yeah, by the way, if you get under the platform, here's what happens. Sorry, there are no trap launches in this game. I'm super disappointed. Oh, we just witnessed a rare glitch. Sometimes sound effects just don't play. I have no idea what causes that. To be fair, we can't hear sound effects, so... Well, yeah, but the, the, the recording can. The recording can, yeah. Boop. This freaking puzzle. This puzzle is the bane of a lot of people's existence. Yep, I can vouch. It, um, basically... Uh, first Half off, the room is basically disabled at this point. First off, there were originally, like, 12 of these walls, I think? Or was it 9? Something like that. I think it was 9. Yeah, and it took, like, forever to do this puzzle. And nobody could figure out how to do it, so I'm like, okay, we'll do it. This God, way. it. You know it's it, bad when you have to get out the graph paper. Yeah. Well, the key to this puzzle, the key to this puzzle is so 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 each of these switches will toggle the walls surrounding that switch, and you're trying to get rid of all of them. Uh, the key here is that um, this 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 doorway right here will let you go through the wall when ordinarily you wouldn't be able to go through it if it's activated there. Like, even here. So, uh, so, so you use that to your advantage, and then essentially you have to just go to each of these tiles and hit the switch there. Much there simpler you go. with three than the original. It's a little bit interesting because when you're doing this, you don't see the number of walls decreasing, but you're still making progress. So now if I hit this switch... Yay! You fired the upvote cannon. <laughs> <laughs> it does look like an upvote cannon, doesn't it? <laughs> Imagine if they had like... They're like, even orange-red. Imagine if they had like little thumbs up, just... <laughs> um, just floating up. <laughs> thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> You have little okay hand particles. So uh, we're gonna get this checkpoint, and then we're gonna go up here. <laughs> so this is the part Dude, where I mentioned the how the programming's been changed. Uh, originally, this puzzle was a lot more random than it is now. Uh, now, if you'll notice, they always come out in a clockwise cycle. So now this wall's gonna fire. I actually didn't know that. This wall's going to fire. Nope, didn't know that either. 
and then this one's going to. Yeah, because the complaint was just that it was too unpredictable and too heavily RNG based. So, um, so now what we can do is we can, uh... Do they come out at a consistent rate? Uh, yes. Yeah, the timing is always exact. So we can jump up these with the blast. And hit this bell. And then what that bell does is it disables this row. Uh, it'll still fire things, but they're oh, they in a sense. They don't have the saw blades on them. Sorry, what was that, yeah. Rosie? Nothing. Uh, so I'm going to show you the, uh, the speedrun strap for this, uh, or at least one variation of it. Uh, you don't even bother Safe trying strap. to use the saws to climb up, you just go up these things. That's the safe strat. You can actually jump up to the second one. I'm sure you can. It's safe. The only downside is sometimes the saw blades will spawn inside you, and then sadness, lots of sadness. And then you cry. Oh, so close. Oh man, okay, I, um, you know how um, people are having problems with, um, they get killed by a saw blade, they're on the lower floor, and then they use the fan, I'm calling it the fan. Um, they use the fan to go up and then they hit a, they hit a platform, so yeah. they get sent back down. I think I, f I think I just thought of a way to fix that. Oh, what's your idea? I'm not sure. Um, basically, if you hit a, um, if, ugh. If you hit one of the platforms on the underside, you can actually like push it off its cycle, but like it would eventually go back to um, staying in its normal like path. That would be difficult really to program, hard. but I'll consider it. Awesome. All right, so now uh, that we have all four of these disabled, oh, they've the challenge of figuring out where the front is. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> It is another thing, actually. Yes. Yes, it is. There should have been like a marker or a floating thing that would show you where the something, something, yeah. the last I level. I mean, it's it's not a huge deal because if you get it wrong on one side, you can just try the other side. <laughs> <laughs> uh, something, something, the last level. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and then another thing is uh, there's a uh, there are a couple of ion cells over here. There's actually one all the way over there. If you see it, Jeez. that one's... Yeah, oh, that's not, that's not nice. That one's fun to get. You basically have to really gun it. Actually, I'm going to see if I can do it. Worst case, we just have to ride the thing up here again. Another ion cell there, by the way. I'm not going to show where all the ion cells are in this level, but I'll show a few of them. I actually Spoil everything. Not 100%. I actually, I actually don't know where they all are. Oh, well, I got the oh, platform. Close. So you at least see the strategy there is to use the blast to uh, to it's... increase your speed so you can jump across. Strategy, no as always, is go fast. Yeah. So, uh, so we're gonna get this, uh, this ion pack here. By the way, if you were playing the demo, you wouldn't have even seen that thing with the ion pack in it. You would have just seen a screen that says, Congratulations, you completed the demo. Full game coming summer of 2017. Fun fact, it technically released in the summer. Summer doesn't end until like the 22nd of September, and it released on the 19th, so we're all good. Um, technically correct. It's the best type of correct. So, so you can see the central tower. This confuses a lot of people that the color of the ion pack doesn't match the color of the wire coming out of that side. And the reason for that is this ion pack here is yellow because we completed the yellow level and the red wires coming out are red orange because it this is the wire leading to the level that we unlocked in completing that level. So you can see here by completing security checkpoint and getting the blue, you know, light blue ion pack, we unlock these next two levels. So the next level we're going to go to is up here. And this platforming section gives a lot of people trouble because these platforms will sort of sink when you uh, when you go onto them, and it's really easy to fall off into the water. Which, by the way, gives me an opportunity to demonstrate some of the water effects. Uh, in particular, nice. the sound is distorted. 
you get this nice sort of water shader. So now if you, uh, if you want to do this quickly, the best approach is just to smoothly roll across and jump off each platform. Like, not even so, trying to slow down or anything, you just jump across. Once again, the approach is go fast. <laughs> Seems to be a common theme in all Marvel games. Sonic. Nah. Well, he says the word gotta. So anyway, so uh, so we're going to go into this level right now. <clears throat> in the game's code, levels are generally referred to by which quantum you get in that level. So this level is just called glue.miss because it's where we'll encounter quantum glue. Um, glue name for the it. The name of the level is Islands of Collis. Um, the fun fact, does anybody know where that name com comes from? Because it's actually kind of funny. I was that just about to ask. Uh, K-O-L-L-A. I mean, that's obviously not how it's spelled in Greek, because in Greek they have Greek letters, but that's the Romanized version of it, is the Greek word for glue. <laughs> so it's literally just islands of glue, <laughs> essentially. Uh, speaking of glue, nice. we're going to fall down into this pool of glue. Some uh, some nice physics effects here. You can you can sort of tell the viscosity of it because as you sort of roll around here, there's a little bit of uh, resistance to your movement. And we've already died. Wonderful. Nice job. And that's a glitch. Wow, I've never seen that version of the glitch before. That is interesting. I think what happened is this. Um, the marble's position, as seen on the screen, is not technically the marble's position in the physics engine. The reason for that is because the physics engine sometimes has little glitches of movement, and so it has like a smoothing algorithm it applies. And I think what just happened is, as I respawned at the start, for like one frame, the marble was trying to smooth its position between where I died and where I respawned, and that happened to land it in the middle of the glue pool for a frame, so it got glue. <laughs> Very interesting glitch there, and I'm sure you I can... I see speedrun strats here. I was going to say, I'm sure you can exploit that in a speedrun if you want. Uh, so yeah. So we're going to use this glue to roll across this thing. And then this... These actually have a name, they're called destabilizers. And they uh, remove whichever quantum power-up you have. Uh, I think I only ever use them in, like, what, two levels? Or is it only this level? I think it might be only this level. I forget. Anyway, yeah. But you could totally use those in a custom level if you wanted to. There's so much potential. Yeah, there is. Yeah, if you want just to feel this level, energy. you know, because, uh... If somebody's interested, I plan to at some point release a, uh, a video showing like how to make a basic custom level for Quaternion. It's a much more complicated process than making one for like MBG or PQ, but uh, it's still doable. Oh, we're gonna see a cutscene now. I actually wasn't originally planning to have cutscene support. Or not cutscene support, sorry. Custom level support. I wasn't originally planning to have it, and then I realized that there was a lot of time left in development. I didn't have much stuff to add. I'm like, you know, what the heck? Why not? We'll add it. And it wasn't that hard to add either. Cool. Oh, uh, fun fact: you can do this first section so fast, you beat the platform going up and fall through the ground. Yeah, that's an interesting glitch. I'd like to see exactly how that happens, but anyway. I um, enjoy you. Or, well. <clears throat> Just get the last one and then jump into the center. Hmm. So, uh, glitch involving these baskets. First off, these baskets used to be smaller. Uh, and it was like a pain in the butt to get into them, so I made them bigger. Yeah, they actually roll on the DTS to, uh, um, to enter the baskets rather than jumping and, and landing. Well, there's also a glitch here where you, you don't even have to go in the basket at all. Let's see if I can pull this off. Oh, yeah, it's, it's like yeah, where the trigger the, is the, or whatever. The, the, uh, the, the, the sort of detection box, the hitbox, so to speak, 
actually extends slightly out of the basket. Might not it's be the same. On this one. Um, it's the I'll same reason. Yeah, go ahead. I'll do it on the next one. Uh, you were saying? Uh, it's the it's the same way where in the Marble Blast Gold level hoops speedrunning oh, yeah. strats, you don't even have to enter the hoop to uh so I um, be able to, do it like to move this. the platform. Oh no, dang! It's hard to get it. Especially when you're trying to export the get a glitch, it doesn't work. Yeah, well, uh, Good old days. The glitch with the glitch. Wow, well, now I'm trying to get out of it. Okay. That moment when you're like failing at your own game. Yeah, I know what that's like. Yep. Yeah, if you jump down in the center after the last one, you'll see what I mean. Oh, by the way, this thing up here? Yep, no collision. <laughs> Oh, you mean you can get like... Well, no, oh, you stayed you... on! Yeah. Hmm. Huh. Apparently but yeah, you can totally do that. Go through there, huh. Oh. That, wow. Props to flat sound effect. Yeah, the flat sound effect is really great. There's actually a, uh... A really funny story about where I got these sound effects from. I'm not sure if I want to uh, tell it on a public video. <laughs> uh, honestly, I think that says enough. <laughs> yeah, I think it does. Alright, these lasers, by the way, have a really cool focus effect, as you can see by the fact that it's, uh, it's focused on certain points. Shaders doesn't do that. You mean No Shaders doesn't do that? Sorry, No Shaders does not do that. Yeah. Um, I, I actually the actual. considered having like an effect to replace that if you don't have shaders on, but I decided it didn't really matter that much because you can just use the uh, the little slider on the left and the light to tell when you have the line. So we're supposed to point it at this, and you can sort of tell with these, uh, these lights because one of those lights will turn on for each dimension you get correct. So, and then you can see all of the lasers right now are converging on that ball there. There's a reason for all of this, which we'll see later on in this level. Also, perhaps to the uh, first tangent function, so that the sound doesn't murder your ears when you fall from super high heights. Yeah, oh my it's, God. it's the inverse tangent function that does that. Yeah, um, it used to be that volume would scale with like how hard you hit, which is fine, except there was no upper bound to it. So you could fall from like a hundred tiles up, and it would like blow out your headphones <laughs> with how loud the bouncing noise was. And because FMOD is like hardware, it would just make your headphones louder instead of clipping the audio. Yeah. Um, was... on, on some machines. On some machines, like on mine machines. actually, it would just uh, lower the volume of everything else to compensate, which actually sounded decent, but um, but yeah, it only happened sometimes. So what I ended up doing is I ended up just modifying the set volume function so that if you try to set the volume to something over one, it sort of applies a smoothing curve to it so that it's still less than one. How wonderful. Yep. So, uh, not much to say about these other sections, they're pretty much the same thing. Oh, I'm gonna see if I can pull out that glitch on this one. Nope. Wow. Wow, I'm, I'm sucking at this. Wow, how hard is that? That's strange, like, I'm not getting it anymore. Apparently really hard. Hmm. Um, okay, give me that a few minutes. <laughs> give me a few minutes, I have to fix something quickly. Um, 
Well, you can just duck out of it for a bit, no worries. Like, we'll keep going without you, if that's alright. Sounds like it's alright. Alright. Yeah, interesting thing about uh, the music in this level, by the way, is uh, of all of the um, of all the tracks on the soundtrack, the final version of this one was made first. Kind of neat. You'll notice I said final version because there was actually an early version of um, oh, what's it called, Tree Climber, uh, made before this project even started. For a different project. And I just reused the tune. Oh, or if you would, that. you tree used it. Wow. Can we get Rosie back so I don't have to listen to your puns? <laughs> you do you want to drag her into these puns too? Also, oh yeah, by the way, there's an ion cell there. Um, you know what? Why not? Let's let's go for it. So I modeled this background music after one of the tracks from uh, Spyro 3. As wow. in, uh, I didn't like steal any of the melody or anything, but uh, if you basically sort of plot out the structure of the song, like how many bars every section is and whatnot, it's all the same. And I wouldn't call that plagiarism personally. Because um, it's the sort of thing that people did all the time in classical music. Like, that's essentially what a sonata is. Is it's just a particular form that your music can come in, and there were like hundreds of them. Written. Still today, actually, actually I wrote one. I wrote a sonatina. As it's a, like poetry, as you know? no? Yeah, exactly. It's like. You know, you're not necessarily, when you write a limerick, you're not necessarily plagiarizing the structure of every other limerick. By the way, is Rosie back? I am back. I thought I heard you laughing. Uh, yes, you did. Hello. Hi, everyone. Hi. Sorry about that. <clears throat> It's probably because I'm distracted, because, <laughs> slight confession, I'm keeping track of the, uh, the, uh, the Cubs game while I'm doing this commentary. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. We're winning, by the way. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yay, team, go team. Jeez. This connection's not too good. Now, I think there's actually an interesting glitch involving those, uh, those lasers. Um, I'm gonna try to pull it off on the next one. Because I've, I've never actually, I don't think I've actually experienced it necessarily, but I've experienced a similar glitch in another level, so I'm thinking, wait a second, you know. How do you, would you say it works? Okay. Well, uh, you'll see it. So, um, I don't really have that much to talk about at the moment. So you can um, do this entire section in one round of glue if you're fast enough. Oh! I got the activate from the outside glitch on that one. 
<laughs> See? Oh yay! One of those glitches that you activate precisely when you're not trying to. <laughs> it's a Heisen bug. It's like the um the ad shit on learning to roll. There is a level that used the same interior, and I kept doing that stupid world record strat edge hit, and I didn't want to. <clears throat> so by the way, some people wonder if these spikes are like harmful. Like if they break your marble, they go. They're just like obstacles. They're shooting around though, which is pretty bad. Considering pretty... that you're rolling up a wall. It's not exactly what you want to have happen. Yeah. Alright, now watch this. I just respawned, but I'm still controlling the laser. <laughs> it's, nice. a, it's a strange bug, because respawning doesn't actually change whether you're controlling something or not. Uh, and now watch, if I, uh, if, I, if I exit the laser, now I'm down here. Oh, that's interesting, because... The other place where this glitch happens when you exit the laser, you show up back, or when you when you exit the thing you're controlling, you show up back at it, even though you respawned. <laughs> it seems like it would make more sense. Alright, this thing's really bumpy. The strategy I usually follow is to roll up this. Imagine just having a full a full on loop. That you that you had to go on the uh, oh. on the same side of. These are the worst right here. Oh, actually, that would be uh, that would be a lot of fun. That would be fun though. Yeah. Have like a loop the loop. In one of these. Yeah. Wow, that'd be great. Yeah, the trick to these is to go on the wall slightly above it, like slightly, and then just jump and hold forward, and you end up in the uh, in the basket. Wow. Yep. I will admit it's a little bit tricky though. This one you can just jump from the wall. And actually you should be able to do that for the last one as well. Running out of uh, things to talk about with this level, you got any comments? This um, one actually, the speedrun time for this level is longer than the any percent record. Um Well. No, not, maybe not yet, but no, the, the by the time the video comes out, maybe. There's there's no any percent record officially because I haven't submitted my run yet. I want to wait for someone else to, but uh, yeah, any percent it will record be. for the whole game, once I release that, will be about like 14, 10, 14, 12, something like that. And Oof, the, uh, the, the, the time that you have to beat in this level for speedrunning to 100% the game is like 14 minutes. It's the longest one out of all of them. <laughs> now, if you listen closely, you can actually hear this door. And that actually didn't happen until late in development. It used to be that in a cutscene, the camera, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the sound would play as if the camera were still back with the marble, instead of where the camera actually is. So... <laughs> nice. Yeah. But I fixed that. And then I had to adjust some of the sound effects in this level because you couldn't hear them anymore in cutscenes. Okay, can I just say that I love the loop at the beginning of this music? I found it on uh, looperman.com. Um, in fact, I credited the guy who made it in the uh, in the audio credits. If you take a look, hey. it's one of these several people. I want to say it's Buffalo. That odd. Nice. Whatever uh, audio, yes, uh, audio yes, credits it's, list. It's, it's Buffalo Nuggalus, or whatever that is. It's Apologies always fun referring to people by username. Butchered it. <laughs> so, um... So yeah, this is the classic, you have three and five gallon tanks, how do you measure four gallons puzzle? Uh, here's the fastest solution. Which is still like 12 moves or whatever. I don't remember how many. Yeah. There's another solution that I think, if you count moves, is exactly as many moves as this. But because of the way the button presses work, it takes uh, more button presses. Question becomes, is solving this problem... Oh, 
I'm going MG up here hard. by I'm going up here by muscle memory because there used to be a switch up here, but um, but now I moved it to down here because yeah, screw having to get all the way up there. Wow. <sighs> Wasn't that bad? Um. Well, it, it's it's not that as much as the fact that people had no idea that there even was a switch because they couldn't find it. <laughs> cough, they cough, like, last level. <laughs> they were like, how do I open the door? <laughs> this part. Actually, I guess you could go in a loop around that. Let's see if I can pull it off. Would you call that a loop to loop? No, I would not, hi guy. What's the joke there? Loop to loop. Yeah. Clear to loop. loop. Oh, I didn't hear the glue part of that. <laughs> of that part. Nice. Yeah, I went around it like one and a half full times. That sounds like a weird oxymoron. One and a half full times. <laughs> Trivia, this is the last level sped around the or speed this <sighs> What's the past tense? Uh, speed speed run. run. The past speed run. would be speed run. Okay. Is speed ran, but in this case would be speed run. This is um, the last level that was speed run before yeah, release. Um, yeah, yeah, it was. And it was not fun, because I did not know how to do. By the way, hi guy, you're wondering if this problem is NP hard? Uh, I yeah. can tell you it definitely isn't for two tanks, because for two tanks, basically there's always an obvious move to make, and then there's a move that goes backwards, and then there are one or two moves that just completely ruin it. So it's kind of obvious. Um, Fair. What the sequence of moves is. For N tanks, though? For N tanks, I'm not sure, actually. It might be NP hard. Actually... Hold on a second, it's a decision problem, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I wanna say, I wanna say that it's equivalent to asking whether the tanks you're given uh, have a, uh, wh whether their heights have a GCD of 1. But I don't know if you can always do it in that case. Well, even if you have a GCD of 1, it wouldn't really help. Well, if you had somewhere else to store it, if two neighboring tanks had a GCD height of one. Well, in this one, no two of the tanks have a GCD of one, but it's still possible because the three of them together do. And that's specifically the mathematical thing I wanted it to satisfy. Like, this puzzle with three tanks, this is literally the smallest possible three tank example that doesn't just reduce to a two tank problem. So if you complain that these tanks are way too freaking tall, I apologize, but that's how the math works out. <laughs> Blame math. <laughs> that is the answer. Because math can't fight back. Math can't fight back. You clearly have never taken graduate math. <laughs> 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 so, we're gonna open this door, and that also opens the door on the other side. A lot of people get to this part, and they get really scared, like, Oh my gosh, th these tanks are so huge! Because they think it's going to be another tank puzzle like the previous ones. Oh my gosh, yeah. Oh yeah. Another thing you'll notice, by the way, is that these puzzles uh, the tanks disappear when you're, like, any non-negligible distance from them. Uh, that's because, um... <laughs> that's because you have people get a lot months. of lag in this area otherwise. You have a 48-gallon tank. Alright, now if you've got a tank that's 37, a tank that's 43, and a tank that's 19... How do you measure... Try because okay, those are all prime numbers. Yeah, I was going to say, if you give them all prime numbers, it's, it's like freaking trivial. Oh. Well, not if they're big prime numbers. Alright, uh, so what we just did there is we had to line up all of these pipes so that the uh, the input ones go to the I'd output just like ones to here. Point out. This puzzle is inconsistent with Tower of Winds, because you don't have to use all the pipes. That is true, I suppose. 
and in Tower of Winds, you do have to use all of the wires. Shout out the realize... loudest sound effect in the game. Oh, this this next sound effect here. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So let's so let's just get it over with. So what happens here isn't exactly made clear per se, but basically, you remember those lasers that we fired into this building earlier? Or into the ball on top of this mm -hmm. building? There's a thing up there that's focusing them all down into, like, one giant laser. And the moral of the story is when you fire a laser through glue, it levitates the glue. This isn't really used Magic. as a mechanic, but it's sort of seen as, like, you know... Like, my idea was that this sort of explains how the people who built this thing got levitating platforms to work. And in fact, this platform here at the end is actually being held up by two lasers. Uh, presumably there's some sort of glue inside that platform that's levitating and lifting it up. Are you gonna release a cannon? Uh, there aren't any cannons in this game. That's another thing. The lasers on top of the towers in this level, people think that they're cannons and are like, how do I shoot my marble? <laughs> the physics on these platforms used to be a lot different, but then when I revised some of the jumping code, jumping, like, broke. So I had to change the physics on these to make jumping not break. How many times did you have to change the physics from the original Marble Blast ones? I mean, the physics were changed from the original Marble Blast ones in the first place. Most of my True. effort was in trying to make them seem like the Marble Blast ones. So I don't know if you can see it. Oh, you can barely see it up there. There's actually a gun up there firing that laser down. But you have to have, like, the perfect camera angle to see it. Or toggle cam. Yeah, or you could cheat. <laughs> platform is a little slow. I wish you I wish you were able to um make it to um this other platform without having to like wait for a um yeah. wait for the platform to reach you again. I mean it's only a big deal if you're a speedrunner, so <laughs> cough cough me So is this level as well activate the ion pack in the Nexus even if you don't pick it up? Um, I think so, yeah. Yeah, that's an interesting point. In most of those levels, you don't actually have to pick up the ion pack, you just have to watch the cutscene that makes the ion pack appear, and then it'll count you as having picked it up. <laughs> Wait, so does that mean that if you press return to Nexus? Yep. How oh, funny. Speedrunning strats. It, but it does not count for time attacks, though. For time attacks, you do actually have to pick it up. God damn it! <laughs> but for uh, for whole game speedruns, yeah, go ahead. Sweet. Shout out to the orange wire being completely roundabout <laughs> on that pillar back there. Roundabout. Da yeah. It... <laughs> we were going so good without any JoJo references. <laughs> got banned. He's... Nah. By the way, interesting thing about this platform here, uh, people have complained that it doesn't go down quite all the way, and there's a reason for that. It's because I didn't want you to be able to die in the Nexus, and you barely don't die. Because <laughs> it stops just above the marble. also see some graphical glitches on that platform due to the way some of the uh, bullet transforms work. If I mention bullet and you have no idea what I'm talking about, bullet is the physics library that uh, Quaternion uses. Different from Marble Blast physics, which are just homebrewed by the uh, by Stock Fire Rod games. DK. Oh Fun right, fact. and we go into the next level, Tower of Winds. It's the level where you don't lose. Ha. Huh. <clears throat> so this level we're going to start in this small room, and this introduces you to the wire sliding puzzles. Oh my god, <laughs> kill me. A huge thing in this level, and are also kill me. really hard. 
I hated speedrunning these. This is so terrible. Well, this one you can Feel. do in two moves. And there you go. Yep. All right. So we've got this big central chamber, and the camera goes through the wall there. That's kind of funny. Uh, and we've got this giant propeller that unfortunately seems to be uh, fixed in place at the moment, so the only other place we can access is this one across here. How convenient. Oh, fun fact on these doors, by the way. Let's see if I can trigger this. Um, the door's collision mesh doesn't actually animate. When the door's open, it's just open. So, like, for instance, if you're fast enough... I don't know... Oh, yeah, you can actually... It, but, but you can actually go through the door, like, visually, if the door doesn't actually open in time. So, uh, that's a good thing in my opinion. Because it means that yeah. you don't have to worry about, like, accidentally catching on the outer rim of the door or anything while you're speeding. Shout out to the hardest part in the game. Yeah, this part with the, the, the whirly gigs is actually really hard to do platforming-wise. Uh, in hindsight, I probably should have made the last jump a little bit easier, because the last jump... Man. Is... yeah. Also, uh, fun fact, the heights of these are, uh... The heights of these are RNG, so... Which is not fun. Now on this last one, it doesn't actually go high enough as is. So what you have to do is you have to sort of balance on this edge of it, so that it's tilted upwards. Oh, and see, I, I fell. Horrible. There used to be a glitch where if you fell out of bounds in this level, your game would lag like heck because it was trying to load a puzzle in a room that's down low in the level. And that puzzle takes a long time to load. But, um... Speedrun strats right there. But, uh, yeah, you don't actually, um... You don't actually have to load that puzzle, like, or the game doesn't actually have to, so... Ah! Got it on the edge hit! Nice! So this one can also be done in two moves. Uh, it's this move and then that one. And a lot of people think that this is supposed to do something to you. It's not, it's just an indicator. And what that indicator is showing is the position of the central propeller. Because the central propeller is now spinning. And this lets us reach the next spot over here. The whistling sound effect in the music to this level, by the way, is actually me whistling. Wow, these fans really blow. Except some of them suck. I okay. clap, but I can't clap with push to talk, so... Uh, you can, uh, you can <laughs> Just hold it, to, like, hold it down with your elbow. <laughs> route to the left over here. I don't know why you would. There's nothing over here. In hindsight, probably could have put an ion cell there, but nah. You can just roll past. I'm intentionally skipping that checkpoint so that I can respawn a few <laughs> speeder and strats. Uh, this one can also be done in two moves. It's just a little bit trickier to see. You have to do that and then that. And now this is spinning at twice the rate. Actually, it's not twice, it's like 60% faster, I want to say. This button here actually does something, but you can't tell what it is yet because you can't get through this door. Oh. All oh, right, respawn of these. So now... Yep. Oh. So now we're going to wait for the platform to come back. <laughs> and that's the one annoying thing about this section. Okay, there? Me? Yeah, I thought, okay. I thought I would restart the video, but it didn't. By the way, an effect that was really fun to program is the fact that the, the effect where you can sort of hear the, uh, the, the propeller in the center of the level, but it's muffled. And then when, when this door opens and shuts, that actually sort of 
animates in a sense. Neat. Yeah, that's a low pass filter. Sound animation. I think automation is the term for sound animation that people typically use. Yep. Yep. Oh, I mean, that sounds right. Speedrun strats on these. A lot of people wonder if they have to take these platforms. Uh, you don't to complete the game. They're just, um, they're just to get the next last checkpoint. But there is an ion cell at the end of them as well. Uh, now this one, I don't think there is any way to do in... Oh, this actually opens right away, huh? I didn't realize that. There isn't actually any way to do this in, uh, wow. I messed that up. In two moves that I know of, you have to use three. Yeah, this one sort of introduces you to the fact that it might not be quite so obvious which way the wire goes, you know, because the wire looks a lot more complicated than that one. Oh, and if you check the, uh, if you check this thing, you can see it's going around very rapidly in the animation, and sure enough, that's what's actually happening. And what this does is it means that the, um, it means that it actually like acts like a giant fan and you can cross over here I'm a fan of that idea oh please no and that fan combines with the quantum copter that we just got to get us up to here there's an actually there's there's kind of a funny bug in this part with this checkpoint where as you can see, depending on where I am on the checkpoint, it's like right on the edge of the trigger for that door, so you can just see the door like open and close a bunch because it's not sure whether to be open or closed. How adorable. And hope you uh, don't like, uh, or hope you don't hate Superman 64 because now we have to fly through the race. Super Mario 64 is better. Also has fly through the rings puzzles actually. Oh my god, you're right, it does. I forgot, about, I forgot about those. And that will open this door here. Yeah, this is like a second type of engine that's powered by uh, rings instead of by. Uh... Well, the ones aren't really powered by the wires, the wires are just to sort of distribute it. Alright, let's see if I can remember the, uh, the optimal route for this puzzle. I think it's this. That's six moves. There might be a way to do it in five, I forget. And I really hope you like ring puzzles, because hey, we are going for more rings. These move up and down, so they're a little bit trickier. And these rings move up and down and left and right. Yeah, I apologize to everybody who has trouble with these, because there's actually a glitch where sometimes you fly right through a ring and it just doesn't register. The question is, do some of the rings move in circles? Because they'd be moving in a ring. I mean, that's what they are doing, so yes. And, uh, are there roses in the center of said rings? They're rosies. Ring around the rosy? Oh my gosh, really? Is that what it's called, <laughs> Rosie, when you do hula hooping? <laughs> yes. And up and down, they also move forward and backward, which is kind of hard to see, but yeah. Oh, see, I, I just clicked that one. So, yeah, it's kind of like uh, it's kind of like an umpire calling strikes in baseball. Occasionally, you have one that goes right down the middle and doesn't get called, and you're like, that is stupid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this wire puzzle is distinguished because, oh, please, uh, because it actually has uh, multiple um, multiple outputs. All right, we've got it, everything now except these two are switched, so we're gonna just hold this strategy that switches them. Yeah, as you do more of these wire puzzles, you sort of build up strategies for like, okay, here's how you switch two wires while leaving the rest unchanged, etc. Or you just mash the buttons randomly until it gets closer to working. Mm. By the way, I uh, do that. The idea it takes me like five minutes to solve each wire puzzle. <laughs> the 
idea here is that in the universe, it's flashing so quickly, it just looks like it's not as bright. In the game, yeah, it's just a separate texture. Wow. Yep. <laughs> Hacking. Uh, so now, now it's spinning quickly, but we're actually not done here. Um, and I'll demonstrate why. Let me actually get this checkpoint down here. This section isn't, in my opinion, explained well enough, but it's explained decent. Yeah, you sort of have to do a little bit of exploring to figure out what to do here. Uh, That's anyway, basically what a bunch of the hints say. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, there's a hint in the last level that's like, if you haven't figured out to explore the level by now, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> so, so this one here, um, uh, you, you can try going in the center, but you're actually going to fall down because it's not quite powerful enough to make you go up yet. And I carefully planned this so that the equilibrium point is actually right here by this door down here. So you just have to go back up through uh, what was the uh, the first ring puzzle. And you're right back to where you were. Hooray! How inspire ring. Are you going to show that... Are you going to show that 30 second shortcut that I found? 30 second... Oh no, I, I, yeah, I can't that's actually a pull good that one off. Really? So, yeah. So there's you just actually... have to... And elevate. I mean, I haven't really tried it enough. That's what I'm saying. You just have to hold. You just have to hold down descend. So there's an elevator here, which is a uh, another whirly gig. Uh, we could take the elevator down, but it's uh, if you're especially if you're speed running, it's simpler to do this. Yeah, but falling off is a thing. Or missing. And there we have. There we are. This puzzle used to lag the game so much because it used to be that every single tile here was its own DPS. Um, Into the game. Oh, cool music land. Because it has cool music. It's called the gas chamber. Yeah, the gas wow. chamber. Wow. <laughs> it's kind of a funny name. Uh, but yeah. Um, so what, uh, what happens here, um, it used to be that every tile was its own DTS, and then I made all of the walls a single DTS because they never change. So, uh, so what's happening here is we've got this blue gas and this red gas coming from these input tanks here, and the output is over here, and that feeds up through there, and there's a little gas indicator there. Now, you've seen two of those indicators earlier in the level, so you can sort of reason that maybe this is pumping gas to elsewhere in the level, which it is. Um, so, yeah, you can... Uh, Bit of a stretch, but sure. I mean... It's not like it's supposed to be easy to figure out necessarily, it's just you kind of reason it out like, oh, that makes sense. Um, and then these buttons will open various gates for the gas. Like this one opens those, this one will open those, this one starts it. Uh, I still to this day think of these as the red, green, and blue buttons, even though they don't have that color in the game, because that's how I thought of them on the, uh, that's, that's when I was planning out this puzzle, I, that's what I wrote them down as. Uh, you can also use, uh, yeah, so like, for instance, here, uh, it's actually, oh, neither one made it to the end. I think if I hit this one, the blue gas makes uh, it. Ah, yes, this puzzle. Yep. Uh, by the way, if you mess up, you can reset it. Like, if, for instance, I hit this button now, now the red gas makes it out, and red actually overrides blue. Like, you can see here, the red gas has sort of taken over. So, if you have red gas in the tube, does it actually do anything? Uh, the red gas is lighter than air, and the blue gas is heavier than air. But I mean, I does it actually fill the center up with red? Yes, it does. Uh, in fact, here, you want to see that? I can, uh, I can show sure. you. Sure. I just have to slide through here. And there you go. Center's filled oh. with red gas. I was ready for this. And the effect that this has is that because it's lighter, uh, the propeller spinning doesn't push as much air, so, uh, you just sort of fall. Alright. Yeah, wow, you fall all the way down here. And now, now you can see I'm sort of getting, like, it, it looks like the gravity is actually higher. That's not a bug. That's because the propeller is actually pulling, um... 
pulling air up. No, wait, that's backwards. That is backwards. Okay, never mind, that is bug. Uh, <laughs> yeah, okay. I got my physics a little bit backwards, apparently, but no big deal. The feeling when bugs in, in a developer's commentary. Eh. Yeah, it's not a big deal. It, it, it occurs very rarely, but... Oh, I fell that time. So, uh, let's let's reset this puzzle, and let's do it the right way, which is that button, that button, and then that button, and you can actually hit those two at the same time, sort of. Right. Fun fact. Um, I'd just like to interject here, the fact that you have the blue gas have to get to the finish instead of the red gas get to the finish. Insert political commentary. <laughs> Yeah, so now that the gas is democratic, we can, uh, <laughs> we, can, we can go up. So now it's pushing more air, meaning that we're going to fly up in the level. And you'll get to see the nice motion blur effect that some people hate. So in 1.1, I'm going to have an option to disable it, among other things. And this looks really cool. I was like, how can I make the, the, the journey up here? Because this takes a good, like, 30 seconds. How can I make it not incredibly boring? And that was what I figured out. is let's With spirals? The walls. Yeah. Also, my spirals make everything vibrating cooler. Vibrating like crazy right now due to all the wind on the marble. Tower of winds. There you go. Well, there you have it. Folks. It's making a whole bunch of wind around your controller because it's moving the air around. Yep. That doesn't work out, but just pretend it does. What do you mean? Well, it doesn't actually create wind. It just creates vibration. Well, yeah, but wind creates vibration. Like, if you were in the middle of a wind current that high, you'd be shaking. That's kind of the idea. I mean, if you were in the middle of a wind current that high, you'd probably be torn to shreds. But, yeah, sure. Wow, I flew right into a laser beam. So laser area, beams. Area, For the yeah, wind. You have, to, you have to collect eight rings instead of five, which is kind of fun. Oh, wow. Did not expect a helicopter to run out there. There's a very strange bug I should probably mention. If you try to come up here at like an earlier point in the level, uh, where like half of this area is invisible, including the copter power when you get it, it's just invisible. It's strange. Yeah, I have no idea what causes it. Is it possible to even do? To get up here that early? Yeah, just sequence uh, break that. Once you 100% the game, it's Okay, well, once you 100% the game, all bets are off. You can glue up the side of Orthoplex Temple, and then just laugh to yourself about it. You glue up the side of everything and laugh about it. And then, we're gonna get this. Oh, and by the way, there's, a, uh, there's an Ion cell up here. <laughs> Spoiler. Alright, and now we're in the final room. It used to be, you now it used to be that you had to solve both of these puzzles. And Thank you for changing like, that. Screw that. So <laughs> now it's you only have to solve one of them. Well, if you can solve both of them, then you get bragging points. You get an ion cell. Actually, that would just be evil. I would totally have made that give an ion cell. Yeah. I'm gonna do this one instead. Screw it. <clears throat> I remember the, uh, the, the solution to this one better. Alright, now that one needs to go over there. So we need that Live there. puzzle solving. Oh! And, uh, we need that one there, and we're almost done. There we go. Boom. Hooray! Yeah. There's actually a sound effect for that ion pack appearing, but it's very quiet in the game. 
Okay, and we're back to the Nexus. Yo, letting you know now that the uh, video has decided to cut out. <laughs> well, I think that's a good place to take a break then. So uh, we're going to take a break for a few minutes, and then we will talk about the last two levels in the game. Yeah. My body is ready. My body is ready. <laughs> See you soon, folks. See ya. End of part one. <laughs>